we will start this lecture with degenerate perturbation theory in the non degenerate perturbation theory we have already covered these things like we will have to find h psi n equal e n psi n where the hamiltonian is the addition of the unperturbed in the perturbed hamiltonian like the perturbation involved in this one in psi n equals to the unperturbed wave function plus the first order correction to the wave function and second order correction and so on similarly the energy due to this perturbation will be modified and we can find the first order correction and the second order correction to the energy it depends on the magnitude of perturbation and as we go along the higher orders of perturbation their magnitude becomes smaller and smaller this is the first order correction to the energy in the non degenerate perturbation theory and this is means the hamiltonian the perturbed hamiltonian or the perturbation is applied on the unperturbed states these are the unperturbed state and it gives you the first order correction to the energy while if we want to find the first order correction to the wave function then the initial wave function is psi n0 or the unperturbed wave function and the perturbed wave function is equal to this value means two states but they are also the unperturbed states and you apply the perturbation on them divided by their respective energies now the question here comes in that what will be this situation when this energy and this energy are equal like there are two states and those two states are having the same energy then the denominator term will become zero and unless and until this one is zero it will become undefined the first order correction will become undefined and we will not be able to find the correction to the wave function or in the second order correction to the energy again this thing was coming in so we will not be able to find the second order correction to the energy when the two levels will have the same energy and that gives us the reason for considering the degenerate perturbation theory like when we say that there more than when more than two states are sharing the same energy we call that those states is the degenerate states for example if you consider the hydrogen atom then in hydrogen atom the energy e n is equal to minus e naught over n square now e naught is 13.6 electron volt where n is equal to 1 2 3 and so on so for each n which is the orbit which is the principal quantum number or the orbit quantum number n is equal to 1 means the first orbit n equal to 2 means the second and third and so on but for each n we are having l as well the orbital quantum number and the orbital quantum number starts from 0 1 2 and it is the maximum value is n minus 1 now when n is equal to 1 so we are having l equal to 0 means the s orbit but when n is equal to 2 when n is 2 then n 0 and 1 values are possible the l 0 value is the s orbit and the l 1 value is the p orbit so there are two orbitals inside this orbit such that n u right is 2 and this is 2 2 is in 2 p orbits these two orbits they are sharing the same energy so these two orbits i can call is the degenerate orbits 
they are the degenerate levels and in this situation I cannot apply if I perturb no the hydrogen atom electron in the second orbit then this will not give me the right result like in the first excited state of hydrogen atom any perturbation it will cause means this theory will cause no result because these two energies will come out to be the same like the s energy minus the p energy or p energy minus the s energy so two levels are of the same energy and we will then need to develop another perturbation theory which we call this is also time independent so this is time independent but degenerate perturbation theory and we start from the twofold degeneracy like only two levels are there and those two levels are having the same energy as I discuss here twofold degeneracy so only two levels I am considering let's say the two levels that I am considering is psi a0 these are the unperturbed states and psi b0 a b are those levels which are unperturbed zero means unperturbed and they are sharing the same energy means they are possessing the same energy now i will not write that n here because we are just considering twofold degeneracy and I can write for them that H0 psi 0 A it will give you A0 psi A0 and H0 psi B0 will give you A0 psi B0 means both of them are having the same energy now the other conditions you know that there are some other conditions as well on the states these these states are the orthonormal states so orthonormal means that psi a0 and psi b0 will be equal to 0 and psi a with psi a or psi b with psi b psi b with psi b they will be equal to 1 so they are normalized I mean this is actually psi a mod square is equal to psi b mod square is equal to 1 so they are orthogonal and they are normalized equal to 1 and we can as we have written psi n equal to the sum of these wave functions so i can write any state psi 0 which is a linear combination of psi a0 and psi b0 for two constants alpha and beta will define their linear combination like these are the constants and their values will give us this linear combination now this psi 0 is it is a linear combination of psi a0 and psi b0 this psi a0 is also an eigen function of the Hamiltonian psi 0 with energy e0 so it will also be true that this is the this is also an eigenstate because when individually these are the eigenstates of h0 unperturbed Hamiltonian then their addition with any constant alpha and beta is also the eigenstate of that Hamiltonian I can write that now we will have to solve this equation and this will be that h psi equals e psi and h is equal 
to h0 plus h prime. And now as I am removing this uh, n term here, so I can write that total energy will be equal to the unperturbed energy plus the first order correction plus the second order correction and so on. Correction to the wavelength we are not considering here because what is our issue? Our issue is that when we will have a two-fold degeneracy, how we will remove this degeneracy? How we will differentiate that these are actually two different states? Like these states are having the same energy. If we are analyzing a spectrum and energy is coming out of two levels to be the same, then whether it's the same level or they are two different levels means which we call in quantum mechanics language is the degenerate levels. So our job here is to find E1. E0 is already known to us because this is the unperturbed energy of the system and E1 is the first order correction to this energy. So in order to find out this thing, let me write the equation and the equation is, uh, you remember the first order correction to the energy was equal to the wave function in energy. This equation, you remember that H0, H0 sine n1 plus h prime psi n1 and this is 0 is equal to e n 0 psi n1 e n 0 psi n1 plus e n 1 psi n 0 this was the equation that we derived um, you know this equation that what we did actually h psi, psi n e n psi n so for h i put h0 h prime and then for the psi n i put this one and for the e n i put this one and this was the first equation that I obtained. So as it is having the e n 1 here so I can go on from this equation onward and then this equation in this language means removing the n subscript I can write is h0 psi 1 is plus h prime psi 0 is equal to e0 psi 1 plus e1 and psi 0. So I have just removed the n subscript and now I will find in order to find E1, I multiply this equation from the left, from this side. Okay, this does matter. So multiplying this equation from the left by psi A0 and do integrate this one. Psi A0 and do integration. Now I will not write them in the integral form, but I will write them in the uh, bracket notation. So I am actually, when I do multiply it from the left with this one, it means I am multiplying with the bra of this one, Psi A0. So you do multiply this and we will get Psi A0 zero h zero psi one plus psi a zero and h prime psi zero and this side will come out to be psi a zero and e zero psi one okay over here plus psi a0 e1 psi 0 right I have just multiplied with this one and I have done the integration like in the bracket notation 
Now what about this value? H0 is a Hermitian operator. So it doesn't matter if I write it here instead of here. So I can write this one is H0 psi A0 and psi 1. It will be like this. Now when this will be applied, it will give me A0 and psi A0 psi 1. Right? What about this one? This is just a number. It is energy and it's a number. So I can take this thing out A0 and psi A0 psi 1. So this side and this side are the same. It means that this term and this term are cancelling on both sides. And I am left with this term and this term. If I look at this term, then this is psi A0. E1, E1 will come outside. And this will be psi A0 and psi 0. So I can write that E1 and psi A0 for psi 0, let me put the value of psi 0, which is alpha psi A0 plus beta psi B0. So I am putting their value alpha psi A0 plus beta psi B0 and is equal to what? And on this side, we will have psi A0 h prime psi 0. Now we will multiply this one and what will be this one like I can write that E1 and then alpha psi A0 and psi A0 and E1 beta psi A0 psi B0 is equal to psi A0 H prime psi 0. Now I know about these that this value is going to be 1 here. So this value goes to 1 and this value goes to 0 because they are orthonormal. So I am left with E1 or alpha times E1 is equal to psi A0 H prime psi 0.